I'm Richard Ostfeld from the Cary Institute of Ecosystem Studies in Millbrook, New York. Okay, so our working group is the Climate Change and Vector-Borne Disease Working Group. Abba, Gamel, Nina, Pfefferman, and myself are the co-organizers. And what we're trying to do is um, advance the field of providing models that will allow us to do a better job of predicting and forecasting where infectious diseases, vector-borne diseases, will move and how bad or less bad they will get as the climate continues to change. Yeah, I, I think um, the, the magnitude of, of the problem is enormous. The, the, you know, malaria affects hundreds of millions of people every year and kills a few million people and most of them are children under five years old and most of those are in Africa um, and but it affects people in Asia in Latin America uh, and existed in the past in the temperate zone both of the eastern and western hemisphere so it's a, an enormously important public health issue and determining how much continuing climate change is going to influence this is enormously important as well. And this is one of the reasons why it's so controversial. The stakes are very high. There are people who argue that even as climate increases entomologic risk, so the number of infected mosquitoes and the rate at which they bite people, um, that in parts of the world that's irrelevant because we have a sufficient standard of living that we can protect ourselves against any increasing risk. And that may well be true in the United States and in Western Europe. Uh, malaria may never come back despite increasing warmth that make things better for the parasite and the mosquito. But that might not necessarily be true in much of the world in which there is not an infrastructure that will protect people against this increasing onslaught of hungry infected mosquitoes. Um, so economics actually become important in, in this as well. But the, the potential for understanding climate effects on public health with such a high profile, high magnitude disease issue um, potentially has big policy implications, both in terms of uh, climate change mitigation and mitigating the impacts of climate change, assuming that we're not going to be able to do much very quickly to slow down the rate at which the planet warms. Well, we're um, entering a field that has had quite a, a history of the use of various different kinds of mathematical models to try to understand and predict vector-borne disease in a warming world. Um, so in a sense, we have uh, quite a strong foundation to build from. One of the issues, though, is that depending on the different type of model that's used, the different modeling approach, different data that are used, entirely different conceptual frameworks for how you even cast the question in the first place, you get vastly different predictions about how climate change is going to influence vector-borne disease, especially malaria, dengue, various other very important public health uh, um, issues worldwide. There are models that uh, predict that essentially the entire planet will be engulfed in a malarial zone and hundreds of millions of more people will get sick from malaria. There are other models that say, well, as the climate continues to warm, there will be no net increase in malaria at all, that there will be some range expansion in places and then range contraction in other places with no net increase in the total number of people living in malarious areas. So it's a, um, a well-developed field but a confusing one with vastly different, qualitatively different conclusions being drawn. And um, so we think that new mathematical approaches can improve our ability to predict what's going to happen both at global scales where much of the attention has gone and at much smaller scales that are actually amenable to mitigation. So if we can predict in a particular location at a particular time that risk will increase, we may be able to actually do something about it. So this is where math and biology and public health all can intersect. People who use ordinary differential equations, partial differential equations, we have statistical modelers we have stochastic modelers together with the deterministic modelers. Um, 
We have uh, public health experts. We have at least one climate modeler in the group, although we may need to get additional climate modelers as the group continues to meet. Um, we have experimental empiricists and sort of um, field-based non-experimental empiricists. Um, so it's quite a mix of, of, of different people, um, although we're focusing on a handful of sort of exemplar vector-borne diseases, particularly malaria and dengue. We also have interest in tick-borne disease, so we have tick experts. Um, we have a, a person who works on um, leishmaniasis and sand flies. So there are things that we can learn from analogous both mathematical and real-world systems, and we're trying to uh, sort of optimally design uh, diversity uh, in this case. And, you know, after the first meeting, I think it's working re relatively well. You can have too much diversity, so you spend too much time learning each other's languages, or too little diversity where there just aren't enough different um, points of, of view and frames of reference.